Handicapper Steve here, handicapping the racing from Pimlico Racecourse here on Preakness Day. It is Saturday, the 15th of May, 2021. We're going to look at all the stakes races, including the Preakness. But before I get on to that, remember to please follow me on Twitter at Horse Racing Kit 5 for more selections for racecourses around the world. And also join me today for my luggage preview from Newberry, which Preakness Day from uh, Pimlico. And uh, we have some great stakes races. So let's look at all of them. Races 1, 3, 6. 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. Did you follow that? Let's get to it right now. Starting off with the opener, it goes off 10.30 in the morning, which is quite not good for me because I have to wake up before 10.30 in the morning to watch the race. But the, the first race, it is the Sir Barton Stakes, purse $100,000, race for three-year-olds here. We have a field of six horses heading to the main track. The distance of ground of 1,700 meters, if you want to go by that, with a distance of ground of a mile and one sixteenth on the Pimlico main track. 1,700 meters, a mile one sixteenth here in the Sir Barton. <clears throat> and I show the diagram, just gives me a second to look down my notes, just bear with me. My top selection and a single in the, er, in the early multi race would be the four horse Hoysier. I'm going to go four, five, three, one in the Super Factor, though. Four, five, three, one Super. Top selection of four horse Hoysier. This um, three year old Colt by Pioneer of the Nile. Bob Baffert trains. Joel Rosario picks up the mount. And the horse is most recent out and came to the Arkansas Derby at Oaklawn, Mile Nath on the 10th of April. And the horse finished six by 19, three quarter lengths. You know, he was with them early on. He completely hit the wall lead. He just couldn't keep up with those very tough horses way down the class ladders even his b race could beat these horses and i just think he's sitting on a very good run two back he ran at uh, oakland again in the rebel a mile and 116th and 13th of march and he finished seven by four and a half lengths he sat back early really had a good turn of foot behind the stalemate concert tour there's nothing bad about that run there and then prior to that uh, and the main special at santino you know, mile 16th 15th february he won by one three quarter lengths from a stock position he got the job done very very easily against very lesser quality horses Coming here today to Pimlico, speed favoring track, has some speed if he wants to use it. At 2-5, to five, a very likely winner, so let's take him. To recap my selection for the first from Pimlico, it is to Sir Barton. Let's take the four horse, Hoysier. We'll go 4-5-3-1 in the Superfecto. Let's get over to race number three now. Race number three from Pimlico. It is to Chick Lang Stakes. Grade three purse, $200,000. Race for three-year-olds here. We have a field of six horses going to the main track. The distance of ground of 1,200 meters, or the distance of ground of six furlongs on the Pimlico main track. 1,200 meters, six furlongs here in the Chick Lane. My top selection, we're going to go take the number six horse here, Willie Boy. We'll go 6 4 2 3 in the Super Facta. 6 4 2 3 Super. Top selection, six horse, Willie Boy. This three year old Gelney Biden captured. Jeff Engler trains. John Velasquez picks up the mount. And the horse is most recent on. He came the sophomore at Tampa. Seven Frongs, 28th of March. And the horse finished second by a half a length there. And, you know, he, he was with him early on. He just kind of hit the wall late. Maybe the seven got to him. Cutting back to six today. Doesn't need the lead. I think from a stock position, the horse could do well i think he's sitting on a very good run two back here in the hutchinson at, at goldstrom on the slop six for was the sixth of march and he went by one and three quarter lengths and basically on the front end almost all throughout he was drifting a little bit late but he still got the job done a very good run major improvement off the race before which came in the holy bull at goldstrom mile 16 30th of january where he finished eighth by 20 and a quarter lengths he was with him early on but then just did not stay the two turns like i said he's not a rounding horse he's gonna love the six he's gonna back to it today he's training well palm meadows Three to one, let's take him. Your second likeliest winner here is the four horse, I think, Jackson Ta Traveler uh, for Steve Aspson. His races over the winter at Oakland haven't been half uh, half bad at all. And uh, this Maryland bred uh, one oh, in Maryland already at Laurel in the uh, Maryland Juvenile Futurity uh, back in December, winning by three quarters length. Very good victory. And actually broke his main here over the course and distance of Pimlico last September. Very good horse. He's training very well at Oakland. We'll give him a shot here at four to five also on the early pick five or six, whatever they're offering. But to recap my selection for the third from Pimlico, it is the Chick Lang. Let's take as a top selection the six horse Willie Boy. We'll give kudos to the four horse Jackson Traveler. Six four two three super. Six four in the multi race. Let's get to race number six. The sixth race from Pimlico, it is the Gallarette Stakes, grade three, purse $150,000, race for Phillies Mayors, three rolls, then upwards. We have a field of six horses heading to the turf course, the distance of ground of 1,700 meters, if you want to go by that, or the distance of ground of a mile and 1 16th on the Pimlico turf course, 1,700 meters, a mile 16th in the Gallarette. 
My top selection, we're going to go take the number five horse here, Mean Mary. We'll go five, six, three, two in the Super Facta. Five, six, three, two, super. Top selection, five horse, Mean Mary. This um, five year old mare by Scad Daddy. Grab motion trains. Luis Saez gets the mount. The horse's most recent outing came in the Bruce Cup Philly Mayor Turf at Keeneland, a mile 316th on the 7th of November. And he fed his seventh by two and a half lengths there. He was with them early on, but just couldn't keep the trip. I think this horse is better at a slower pace mile and a half. Not a very quick pace. Mile 316th, Bruce Cup, Philly Mayor Turf. Just wasn't keeping the trip. It wasn't her day to win. Stepping down in class, mile 16th. Not a lot of pace in this one. I think she could really run a good race here today, even with a shorter trip. Two back, she ran at, Bel at Saratoga, mile late than to Diana. And she finished second by a neck. She was with him early on. She got caught late, but she didn't completely hit the wall. Rushing, she she fought a good fight with the rushing fall. I didn't think it was a half bad event. Earning a career best 102 buyer there. And then prior to the 27th of June at Belmont, Mile a quarter in the New York handicap. The horse won by five and a quarter lengths, basically walking the dog on the front end, 51 and four to the half. You're going to win off of that, and she definitely did a very easy race. And then prior to that, won the York at, uh, at Goldstream in March very, very easily last season. Coming back here to um, coming here to Pimlico for the first time shouldn't be a problem. At 6-5, to five, very likely winner. If there's a horse that could close up to win, I think it could be the six-horse feels glorious. Christophe Clement trains. Joel Rosario gets him out. Most recently, the horse ran a very good place in the uh, Sand Springs at Goldstream. Race a little bit longer would have made it interesting, but I didn't think it was a half-bad race there. And then prior to that, another very good third-place finish in the Honey Fox. You know, she, she, she has one running style. That's coming from behind. If there's going to be a pace meltdown at 7-2, I think she could get the job done. We'll use her in the, um, in the pick for it. That begins with this race, by the way. But to recap my selection for the six from Pimlico, it is the grade three Gallarette. Let's take the five horse Mean Mary. Give kudos to the six horse. Feels glorious. Five, six, three, two, super. Five, six in the multi race. Let's head over to race number eight. The eighth race from Pimlico, it is James W. Murphy Stakes, purse $100,000, race for three-year-olds here. We have a field of eight horses heading to the turf course. The distance of ground is 1,600 meters, if you want to go by that, with a distance of ground of one mile on the Pimlico turf course. 1,600 meters, a mile here in the James W. Murphy. My top selection, we're going to go take the number eight horse here, TD Dance. We'll go eight, five, six, three in the Super Facta, eight, five, six, three, Super. Top selection, eight horse, TD Dance. It's three old Colt by Can the Man. Brad Cox trains. Javier Castellano gets the mount. The horse is most recent. Adam came 27th of March at the fairgrounds. About a mile 16th, an opposite 50 claimer. And the horse went by one three quarter lengths. And a very dream trip. Stalking early on. Got the lead in the lane. Quickened up nicely. An all around good race, earning a 79 buyer. Two back in the black goal at the fairgrounds. About a mile 16th, 27th of February. The horse needed the race there. He finished fifth, fifth by four lengths there. He didn't break that well. A little bit too wide. And just never really got going late. First off, a little bit refreshing. Like I said, need the race there. And then prior to that, the 4th of December at the fairgrounds, one mile and optional 50, the horse finished second by a neck, just kind of stalked after not the best beginnings, and just really, you know, couldn't get there late, and he also had to take up a little bit, which cost him <laughs> definitely there, uh, and then the debut at, the, at Indiana, one mile in the main special way, 31,000, went by two lengths from the outside post, 11-11, uh, the best thing to do is leave out of the gate, and he did just that, and he went all the way, a very good, clear victory, training well at Churchill, coming here to Pimlico shouldn't be a problem, 7-2, to two, let's use him, your second likeliest winner in this event i think it's the five horse extra sexy big daddy three old gilling by uh congrats michael trombetter trains jose ortiz gets him out most recently here in new york in the woodhaven the horse placed finished fourth by four lengths there which is a little bit too wide never really got going but before that i thought the horse had a very good run in the rush away and then before the turf went over the mile, uh, won very easily. I think the horse runs a little bit better closer to the front end. Hopefully, Jose takes the horse closer to the front end because I think he could go all the way. 10-1, to 1, we'll definitely use him on the ticket. But to recap my selection for the 8th from Pimlico, it is James W. Murphy Stakes. Let's take the 8-horse TD Dance. We'll give kudos to the 5-horse Extra Sexy Big Daddy. 8-5-6-3 Super. 8-5 in the multi-race to race number 9. Race number nine from Pimlico. It is the Ski Pass Stakes. Purse $100,000. Race for Phillies and Mayors. Three-year-olds and upwards. We have a field of eight horses heading to the main track. The distance of ground 1,200 meters with the distance of ground of six furlongs on the Pimlico main track. 1,200 meters, six furlongs here in the Ski Pass. 
my top selection, we're going to go take the number five horse here, Chub Wagon. We'll go 5284 in the Super Facta. 5284 Super. Top selection of five horse, Chub Wagon. Four year by Hey Chub. Um, Guadalupe Precado trains this one. Um, I ride it to use Junior gets the mount. The horse is most recent out and came at uh, Parks. 27th of April, seven frongs and new Bella Stakes. And the horse went by seven and a half lengths. And basically on the front and all throughout at 50 cents of the dollar this horse just kept going quick up nicely a very good easy race earning 93 buyer prior to that horse ran an aqueduct six from second of april and now 62 winning by four and a half lengths again on the front and all throughout this horse just took off clear a very good race and then off the bench on the second of march at parks five and a half and allowance race 35,000. winning by 10 wasn't 100 percent cranked that day but was and was facing lesser quality horses but still put on a show there has been training very nicely definitely has the speed to win here and eight to five definitely use a horse on your ticket if there could be a pace meltdown um your second likeliest winner here would be the two horse casual ricardo santana jr is on this one for steve absenson most recently the horse ran a very good third in the carousel at oakland and then a very nice place behind kamari in the uh, in the spring fever at oakland um if there's going to be a horse coming from the uh, from the back i think at nine to two casual get the job done the uh, late pick five begins with this race so i think you want to go deep in, deep in this one but to recap my selection for the ninth from pimlico it's the ski pad let's take the five horse chub wagon as a top selection give kudos to the two horse casual we'll go five two eight four super five two in the multi race to the jim mckay turf sprint race number 10 from pimlico Race number 10 from Pimlico. It is the Jim McKay Turf Sprint. It's going for a purse of $100,000. Race for three-year-olds and upwards. We have a baker's dozen, 13 horses heading to lawn the distance of ground 1,000 meters, if you want to go by that, or the distance of ground of five furlongs on the Pimlico Turf Course. 1,000 meters, five furlongs here in the Jim McKay Turf Sprint. My top selection, we're going to go take the number four horse, critical, the critical way. We'll go 4 8 Thirteen two in the Super Facta four eight thirteen two Super top selection of four horse the critical way the Semiro Gillen by Tizway Jose Delgado trains Luis Sayas gets them out and the horse is most recent out and came third of April at Keeneland five and a half furlongs in the Shaker Town and the horse finished third by three lengths if the horse just wasn't drawn stupidly wide probably would have won but he had to leave from the outside gate a little bit wide throughout and he kind of hung late he just couldn't keep up. Better post right here today from the inside, and a lot more fresher. I think the horse is sitting on a very good run. Two back of the horse were in the turf stash at Tampa, five furlongs, 24th of February, and the horse won by half length. Basically almost on the front end all throughout. He actually beat a decent horse home in Primus. Uh, quick up nicely, got the job done, a very good run there. And then prior to that, New Year's Day at Goldstream, five furlongs in the Yana Stakes. The horse finished third by three quarters length. Nobody was catching on prim uh, Imprimis that day. Uh, this horse actually got caught by him <laughs> late, and he took off clear. But this horse, you know, he still ran a a decent third and then prior to then a tampa five furlongs and ops with 32 winning by two again on the front and all throughout could have won around another five times it was definitely the freshest horse there um so let's go into the new connections this horse has really run these decent races coming to pimlico for the first time should be a problem five two a very likely winner don't throw out the eight horse here. Uh, love you much. A twenty to one. Um, you know his most recent race in the King Leather Bear here at uh, Pimlico a few weeks ago. I thought he ran a decent fourth. Um, if he had a little bit better trip, probably would have made it interesting. And also second off the bench today should really suit him well. Prior to that, in the uh, Maryland Million Turf Sprint, he uh, finished fifth by five and three quarter lengths, and he just had a, again a little bit of a trouble trip with these turf sprints. You need to get a good trip. Um, he ran third in this race last October. Uh, you know he's coming here to, again today. If he can get a good trip. Trip. At 21, he might make it interesting late, so we'll definitely use him on the multis. Depending on his odds, we might do a small each way on him. Um, he's the long shot of the day. And also, don't throw out the three-horse completed pass. He's going to have to really get a good trip from 13 to 13. Um, you know, but his most recent races weren't half bad. He likes his turf course. 7 to 2, let's use him on the multis. Um, but to recap my selections for the 10th from Pimlico, it's Jim McKay Turf Sprint. Let's take as a top selection of four-horse the critical way. We'll give kudos to the... 8 horse love you much of the 13 horse completed pass 4 8 13 2 super 4 8 13 in the multi race to the 11th Race number 11 from Pimlico. It is the Maryland Sprint. Grade 3 purse, $150,000. Race for three-year-olds and upwards. We have a field of 11 horses heading to the lawn, to the t main track, excuse me, the distance of ground 1,200 meters, or the distance of ground of six furlongs on the Pimlico main track. 1,200 meters, six furlongs here in the Maryland Sprint. A race always to be remembered by the horse hitting, by the guy hitting Artax in 1999 in the running. The guy, the drunk guy jumping on the track and 
basically trying to take out Artax. Um, little bit did he know later that year, Artax would be, I believe, crown champions uh, sprinter by winning the um, Goldstream Breeze Cup sprint that year. But uh, it was a great horse, Artax, very underrated. Um, and I s still think he he might own the track record of Aqueduct of Belmont for six or seven furlongs. I think gotta go check that one. I know we definitely had it in that Breeze Cup turf in, in that Breeze Cup sprint at Goldstream. But with that being said, my top selection, I'm going to go with the five horse strike power. We'll go 5 1 7 11 in the Super Facta. 5 1 7 11 Super. Top selection of five horse strike power. The six year old horse by Spice Town. Steve Asmussen trains. Ricardo Santana Jr. gets the mount. And the horse is most recent. I came the 10th of April at Oaklawn. Six strongs in the Count Fleet, Count Fleet Sprint Handicap. And the horse finished fourth by three and three quarter lengths there. He was with them early on. He just couldn't keep up late. A very tough grade one. Down to a grade three. Lesser quality horse back to Pimlico for these absent horses where they show up very well in the past. I think he's sitting on a good run. Two back in Ops 100 at Oakland, six from 11th of March. He won by three and three quarter lengths and basically in the front and all throughout, he just kept going. Oh, career best 101 buyer and all around great race. And then prior to that, the King Cotton at Oakland, six from on the slop. He finished fifth by four and three quarter lengths. He didn't break that well and was just a little bit lax a day as go throughout the race. I think off the bench, he needed the race. And then prior to that, his first race in 11 months at Churchill, six from Optional 80, first start for Ad Asmussen, he finished second by two and a half lengths. He was dueling early on. He just couldn't keep up late, but he didn't completely hit the wall. He showed some heart there. Since with every single race, I thought in the Asmussen barn, He's really improving. 7-2 coming here today. He's a very likely winner. You know, your second likely winner is the one horse, Lockie, from the inside. Horacio Caramanos is on this one. Um, he's a local horse, and he has a run half bad here at Pimlico. 4-2 and two on the surface. He won the Frank Whiteley here a few weeks ago. <coughs> a decent third in the um, in the General George back in uh, February. And uh, and then he won the uh, the Francis Dash here last year at Pimlico very nicely. At 6-1, we'll definitely use him on the ticket because he likes his track. And also, you know, these Maryland horses, you can't throw out all the time either in these big races on Preakness weekend. But to recap my selection for the 11th from Pimlico, it's the Maryland Sprint. So let's take the 5-4 Strike Power as a top selection. Give kudos to the one-horse Lockie. 5 one seven, 11, Super. 5-1 in the multi-race to the 12th race from Pimlico. Race number 12 from Pimlico. It is the Dinner Party Stakes. Grade 2, purse $250,000. Race for three-year-olds and upwards. We have a field of eight horses heading to the Pimlico Lawn. The distance of the distance of ground is 1,700 meters, or the mile and 1 16th trip on the Pimlico Turf Course. 1,700 meters and mile 1 16th. My top selection here, we're going to go take... <clears throat> Excuse me. We're gonna go take the number five horse Sacred Life. We'll go five one six three in the Superfecta. Five one six three super. Top selection of five horse Sacred Life. The six year old horse here, Chad Brown trains. Javier Consolano gets the mount. His seasonal reappearance came the ninth of April at Keeneland on one mile in this maker's mark mile. And he finished third by two and a half lengths. He had a little bit of a turn of foot late, a little bit wide. I didn't think he ran half bad off the bench. Second off the bench, coming here is hit a little bit quicker pace. I think he's sitting on a good run. Two back as the favorite. He ran the Turf Classic at Churchill, one mile in the eighth, the 5th of September. And he finished fourth by one three-quarter lengths there. And he was a little bit wide, had the lead for a lit portion, but then completely crumbled under the pressure. It just wasn't his day to win. And then prior to that, the Ocean Port at Monmouth, mile 16th, 9th of August. He uh, won by four lengths. Stogging that day, great turn of foot. He got the job done very nicely. Do not know why he was 20 cents to the dollar at, uh, or, you know, just under 2-1 favorite at uh, Churchill on Derby Day last year. That was just incredibly crap uh, pick there. Uh, and Digital Age was a great prize. Better horse won easily. Had money on him. But um, still, that's a head-scratcher there. Uh, but um, if you look at his races in 2019-2020, he wasn't ha running half bad. Uh, decent fourth in the Pegasus. Decent place in the uh, Seabiscuit, if the, where the horse, if he, got, if he got a better trip, probably would have won that Seabiscuit in 2019. But coming here today, drawn well at seven to five. Let's use him on the ticket. Your second likeliest winner here. I think it's the one horse I'm like at Hop Brown. He has the speed to win if he wants to use it. Um, you know, he ran this race last year where he placed on a very, very demanding ground. Also, the, also he, he, uh, he, you know, was facing factor this who just basically won on the front end. He just couldn't get into it late. But coming here a little bit quicker round hopefully I think he's sitting on a better run 4-1 to one, we'll definitely use him on the ticket and do not throw out the 6 horse talk or listen either for Arnold Delacour Flavian Brad gets the mound most recently he ran out a decent 4th at Keelan off the bench and then before that a decent four than the Tampa Bay where the horse had a stupidly troubled trip coming here today hopefully with a better trip at 8-1 to one. 
you know, I think he could possibly get the job done also. So we'll definitely use them pick six. So to recap my selection for the 12th from Pemlico, it is the Grey 2 Dinner Party Stakes. As a top selection, we'll take the 5 horse Sacred Life. Give kudos to the 1 horse li Some Like at Hot Brown and the 6 horse Talk or Listen. 5163 Super, 516 in the multi race. Let's get to the featured 13th race from Old Pemlico. Race number 13 from Pimlico. It is the Preakness Stakes. Purse $1 million. It's for three-year-olds here. We have a field of 10 horses heading to the main track. The distance of ground of 1,900 meters or the distance of ground of 1 mile and 3 sixteenths on the Pimlico main track. 1,900 meters a mile 3 sixteenths here in the Preakness. I have a very good race this year. With that being said, I'm going to go with the five horse Midnight Bourbon as a top selection. We'll go 5 10 3 9 in the Super Facta. 5 10 3 9 Super. Top selection of five horse Midnight Bourbon. This three year old Colt by Tiz now. Steve Mathison trains. I Ryder Tease Jr. gets the mount. The horse is most recent out of him, the Kentucky Derby, two weeks ago at Churchill. Mount a quarter the first of May, and he finished sixth by eight and a quarter lengths. He, you know, he closed up a little bit that day. He didn't have the best of trips early on, a little bit wide, but, you know, he, he set a well laid coming here hopefully showing some speed they were supposed to show some speed uh, rumor has it in the derby but it just never uh, materialized showing some speed here today i think he could really run a good race and at the end of the derby you, you know the way he galloped out you didn't see a very tired horse at all and the way he's been training it doesn't look like the derby took a lot out of him and i think coming here today He's sitting on a lot better run. Two back in Louisiana Derby at the fairgrounds, mile 3 16th, the 20th of March. He finished second by two lengths. He was with him early on. He just couldn't get the good turn of foot late. Hot Rod Charlie just ran a little bit of a better race. But again, this horse didn't run half bad at all. And prior to that, in the Risen Star at the fairgrounds, mile in the 8th, he finished third by one three quarter lengths, a little bit wide. And again, he just was a little bit lax in his goal. Mandaloo and just ran that better race on the front end. Um, and then prior to that, in the Lecomte at the fairgrounds, mile 16, 16th of January, winning by length on the front end all the right. He just kept going a very good race run um like i said i think he should definitely get the mile 3 16th if he shows some speed it, i think it's a lot better uh, five to one let's use him your second likely winner is a 10 horse concert tour three or quote by streets and bob baffert trains mike smith gets the mount i love how they skipped the derby with this horse they could definitely got into the derby but they said you know what he's not going to be 100 percent for the derby let's get that extra two weeks and run him in the preakness the only thing I don't like is 5-2 odds on him. Bob Baffert trains. Mike Smith gets the mounts. Most recently, Arkansas Derby at Oakland a month ago and going in the mile eighth trip. And he finished third by two and a quarter lengths at 30 cents a dollar. He was with them early on and just couldn't quicken up. It was a kind of weird, lackadaisical run for him. Prior to that, he won the Rebel by four and a half on the front and all throughout. A very good, easy race. And then won the San Vicente even easier coming from the stalling position. Position. He should definitely get the trip. He's going to show speed from the outside. Training well at Churchill. 5-2, a very likely winner. Uh, just the only big question with him is the Bob Baffert factor. Um, again, if you want to use him, the three-horse Medina Spirit, I don't think he'll get as easy a lead like he did in the Derby most recently, uh, two weeks ago, where he won by half length and won a two-buyer, and uh, he just kept going. He, he fought a good race there. I, but I don't think he's going to get as easy as a run here today. Uh, and, uh, you know, he, he, he can win. We'll use him on the ticket. But at 9-5, to five, I, he's just a head scratcher here. And while talking about him, the 9-horse risk-taking, you can use on your multis if you have the extra payroll. You know, if there's going to be a horse closing, I think it could be him. Um, and definitely a horse you use on your underneath on the uh, on the picks, on the supers and trifectas. Most recently, he just didn't really show up in the wood, but won the withers very, very easily. And then broke the main before that at, at Aqueduct very, very easily. He's a horse that should definitely get the mile 316s, mile and a quarter in the future, or even mile and a half in the future. Should really suit him well. Uh, training well. A 15 1. If you have the extra payroll, definitely use him. But I do think it's two horse race between Midnight Bourbon and Concert Tour in this one. But to recount my selection for the 13th from Pimlico, it is the grade $1 million Preakness. As a top selection, we'll take the five horse Midnight Bourbon. Give kudos to the 10 horse Concert Tour. 5 10 3 9 Super. And like I said, if you have the extra payroll, definitely use all four of those on your multi race ticket. But most definitely use the 5 and 10 Midnight Bourbon and Concert Tour on your multi race tickets. So good luck to all. And please follow me on Twitter at Horse Racing Kid. Five. Good luck, everybody.